What's happening, family? Dr. Joe here. Hope each of you are well and blessed. This particular uh, title of this particular video, uh, three things African Americans are doing now that our ancestors did not do. All right. Now, this is not just germane to people who are African Americans, but any individual who is of African is a, is a descendant of an African that has African blood, uh, meaning that your ancestors came from the motherland, etc. So I'm actually addressing a multitude of individuals who could potentially not only be living here in the West, but other parts of the world. Three things that black people are doing now that our ancestors did not do. Two of them are nutritional. One of them is more so of a lifestyle. It's very, very important because it allows you to see that in these three things that we are doing, we are not optimizing uh, based upon our genetic predisposition. At the end of the day, no matter how you live your life, if how you're living your life is antithetical from your genetic predisposition, meaning what? Your ancestors from 20, 30, 40,000 years ago have basically put into motion the genetic manifestation of who you are right now. So even though you may live in Detroit or Los Angeles or Atlanta or uh, Australia or wherever you are in the world, your genetic predisposition has been set for tens of thousands of years. We have to understand those things. The three things that black people are doing now that our ancestors did not do. Number one, overly consuming meat. Your ancestors, my ancestors, our ancestors were not huge meat eaters. Those who lived in fixed civilizations, maybe by the Nile and Kemet in different places to where there were city states and they were fixed. The vast majority of them were vegetarians. It's true. All right. Or the nomads or the hunters and gatherers were individuals who weren't fixed, but they were going from place to place to place. Those were the individuals that if they ate meat, they ate it sparingly. And it was a natural form of meat. So it wasn't this cattle herded type of uh, uh, um, uh, livestock that was intentionally fattened like the meat that we eat here, whereby the price of the meat is basically determined by its marmalization or, or how much fat is a part of it. So what we have to understand is it's not that you should eat meat or should not eat meat. But the key is for we as black people to understand that what allows us to thrive is when the base of our meals are plant based. We're going to thrive better because our body genetically does not process animal proteins like our Caucasian brothers and sisters, like our Asian brothers and sisters. Genetically, we are different because of where our ancestors came from and how they lived their lives for tens of thousands of years, which put into motion the predisposition of our current genetic expressions. So by having this slave type of way of eating, and when I say slave type of way of eating, you know, the ribs, the 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 the, the turkey backs, necks, and the, the gizzards and the chitlins and all that stuff, our ancestors didn't eat that. And what happens is we overly consume that stuff, which is highly carcinogenic, which is the reason why we're the ones dying from these types of problems first. So the first thing that people have to understand is it's not about you have to be a vegetarian because some people do thrive in the presence of quality uh, animal protein at the, at the appropriate amount. But it means that the base of our meals and our foods needs to be vegetarian or plant-based. That's number one. Number two, the second thing we as black people are doing that our ancestors did not do is the overconsumption of sodium. Now, we as black people suffer from cardiac arrest, strokes, hypertensive. We're number one on all of those lists, and that's not the list that you want to be leading in. And one of the issues is we have to understand our genetic predisposition based upon our ancestors. Our ancestors came from hot, arid climates. When you come from hot, arid climates, you're going to be doing a lot of perspiring, a lot of sweating, which means that in order for us to evolve, biologic, biologically speaking, biological evolution, all right, our the genetic predisposition of our ancestors was one that had genes that would hold on to sodium in order for us to have a better chance to survive in those type of climates. 
meaning that if you give a person who is not of African descent a certain amount of sodium and you give one of African descent a certain the same amount of sodium, the person who's of African descent is going to hold on to those sodium molecules more than those who are not because of that biological evolution over time needing to do that for survival purposes. So when when the American Heart Association says, hey, you need X amount of milligrams of salt per day, we as black people need a lower amount. Now, the problem with that is not necessarily in the sea salt or the salts that you're adding to your meals, but it's the fact that we're eating so much processed foods that have sodium on the inside of it. All right. Pizzas, uh, French fries, packaged snacks, frozen dinners, uh, 90 percent of the crap Americans eat have high amounts of sodium to preserve it because once again, it's weaponized foods. So we have to understand that we don't need as much sodium as our uh, as our Caucasian counterparts and our Asian counterparts because of our genetic predisposition. Lastly, I told you that the first two were nutritional. The last one is lifestyle. The last thing that we as black people are doing that our ancestors did not do is we are walking around too big. Black people are not individuals who are made to be obese, to have guts and butts as we do. Our men are too big and our women are too big, especially here in the West. We carry too much weight. Our African ancestors were individuals who were athletes. You have to understand it's a reason why when you look on television and you see that wherever black people are, we are thriving in sports. It's because of our natural genetic predisposition in terms of how we're built. We've got denser bones. We 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 have high musculature is we do very well in, 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 in all types of sports, bodybuilding. That's a genetic predisposition based upon our genes. So when we are naturally predisposed to be these leaner individuals, however, we're living in, the, in, in a place to where we are the most obese demographic of any other race of individuals. That's problematic. So, so basically, when you're putting all of this weight on our bodies and we're not genetically disposed to handle those types of weights, you're going to have a long laundry list of nefarious health manifestations, which we're already seeing. When you study the Vikings and when you study a lot of our Caucasian brothers and sisters who come from certain areas uh, of Europe, are, a lot of them were, were a lot bigger because they're in colder climates, higher amounts of body fat, different. They have a completely different genetic predisposition than we as, as black people. Black people need to be lean. We need to be active. We need to be mobile, just like all people do, but especially for you and I. All right. Our ancestors were individuals who lived in a place that required them to be leaner for the long distance uh, traveling, the long distance running, the long hunts, uh, the, the, the things that required optimizing these uh, um, athletic predispositions. So these are just a few things. And I could talk on and on and on and on and on about this. But these are just three things that we as black people are doing that our ancestors did not do. I hope you're learning from this. And I just want you all to know that everybody who's in the 40 day turn up, who's about to come through with us at the top of 2023, we're going to teach you all of what you need to know to optimize your life in a way that you are on the road to becoming your best possible self. Until next time, be well and be blessed. And we'll see you on the next one. Peace.